investors brace for their latest update on the health of the AI boom. Welcome to Market Insight, I'm Thomas Warner. Trading on Wall Street's major markets is notably muted ahead of Nvidia's Q2 results due out tomorrow. Anything less than another remarkable quarter from the AI darling will shake things up very quickly indeed. So what should we be expecting? Joining me now to give his take is Ross Gerber, co-founder of Wealth and Investment Managers Gerber Kawasaki. Welcome, Ross. People may know that NVIDIA makes up around 9% of your Gerber Kawasaki ETF. We're forecasting Q2 revenue of almost $28.7 billion for NVIDIA. That's twice higher than last year. Is that what you're expecting? Yeah, that is what I'm expecting. And, you know, once again, I think NVIDIA's numbers are off the charts for a company of its size. And to be doubling revenue with 70% margins is incredible by any standard. So I do think the market expectations might be elevated. And, and so on the short term, we'll see some volatility in the stock. But I think for long-term investors, the story is more than intact. And we'll have verification of that, you know, moving through earnings and into their guidance. So, so we're very bullish on NVIDIA long-term. Well, you've mentioned the margins there. They have been under a little bit of pressure from all that capacity expansion that they've been doing. So outside of margins and revenues, what do you think are the figures that are going to be the most uh, influential in terms of the market's reaction tomorrow? I think mo what most people are kind of wanting to hear is the product roadmap with future products. There were some rumors about delays and, and really the transition past H100 chips. So I think that's what everybody's kind of looking for. We know there's demand into uh, 2025 for the new chips, the Blackwell chips. So, you know, I, I think it's really is everything on track it is, you know, chip, you know, production normalized. And, and if that's verified, I think the market will, will be happy with the results and we'll see less volatility. But, you know, once again, it wouldn't surprise me to see some sort of selling in the stock just because the expectations are ridiculously high. Well, Ross, over the last couple of months, we've seen some incredibly ridiculous reactions, in fact, to even seemingly innocuous bits of data. Tomorrow's results from NVIDIA, you couldn't even really class them as being at all innocuous. So we could be set for quite a strong reaction from the market, couldn't we? Well, it's very possible, too. You know, once again, NVIDIA's valuation is extremely high, and it does take into account a lot of uh, the growth that they've seen. But you know, this is the beginning of the AI revolution, not the middle or the end. So, so investors certainly need to own this stock and they might get that verification tomorrow that really says, hey, this, this story is intact and I need to own the stock if I don't own the stock. And that is what could push it higher. But NVIDIA is a well-owned company. So once again, I, I'm trying to temper people's expectations because the valuations have gone up so much in the last year. Well, your ETF is quite exposed to AI at the moment. You've got several of those mega caps yes. in the basket there. What's your plan if we do see some unexpected signs of cooling from NVIDIA tomorrow? Well, we'll, we'll add to any weakness in the chip sector, in particular NVIDIA, uh, AMD or Broadcom, which are our three chip holdings. And, you know, any opportunity we have on pullbacks, we're looking to enter the market. So we have plenty of capital at our firm. Investors are flush with cash. And knowing that rates are going lower, people want to put cash to work. But with valuations so high, it really gives investors little opportunity. So any pullback in markets for us that represents any value in the AI sector, we're going to take a look at buying those stocks. Because once again, we think this is the beginning of the trend, not the middle or the end. Let's move on to one of the other Magnificent Seven now, Ross. Tesla, you told Yahoo Finance that you've sold more than half your holding, made a few headlines in the process. So what's your issue with the stock? Well, mostly we started selling, uh, now it's about seven or eight months ago when the tweets became sort of racist and anti-Semitic and we felt that Elon Musk's reputation among Tesla buyers was dropping substantially to the point now where he's one of the most hated people in, on earth and let alone on in California, unfortunately. And so it's really cast a pall on selling cars for Tesla because their core demographic is liber liberal and it is not being picked up by a conservative demographic or Trump supporters. So with the uh, sort of current position of Elon being a direct massive supporter of Donald Trump, it's really turned off whatever buyers that were left in California and in Europe um, pr pretty much are not considering Teslas anymore. And so this is going to substantially and materially affect the company's sales over the short and long term. And so, you know, this is a big 
issue when you're in the you know car selling business and you build technology that you know can change the world it's only works if people want to buy your products so if people don't want to buy your products it doesn't matter what you invent and i think elon's going to be learning this secondly we think that full self driving has fallen behind now waymo and you know the advancements in full self driving are still not satisfactory to be able to be a robo taxi and and to build a robot so a lot of the things tesla's talking about we're very concerned on their ability to deliver that anytime soon so tesla's got a lot of issues in front of them and most of them are self created and so they're solvable issues but but it will take a change in the in sort of the way that tesla's being run that was Ross Gerber expressing some of his personal opinions there. Thank you, Ross, co-founder of Wealth and Investment Managers, Gerber Kawasaki. And that is Market Insight. Don't forget, you can watch more videos on Reuters.com.